here for my great challenge. Welcome back to my Vlogmas 2019. Today is day number six. I'm going to the Market Street Mission uh, thrift shop. We are in Morristown, New Jersey. The day didn't start too good for me. I was going to take you to a very merry 19th century Christmas at the Acorn Hall, which is a, um, the Morris County Historical Society. They're having a special exhibit on Victorian Christmas and they turned out to be closed on Fridays. <laughs> so I'll come back on Sunday so you'll get to see that if they let me film, because I didn't even know if they were going to let me film. But anyway, so that was a bomb. Uh, so now I'm going to the Market Street Mission and I'm going to see what they have in there for thrifting. And then after that, I'll go home and I'll make chestnut shortbread. So this is the Market Street Mission thrift shop on George Street in Morristown. I believe they're having Christmas special, so let's go check it out. So I've been to this store before, but I think the last time I went there, they were about 10 minutes from closing. I didn't really get a chance to give it a good look, so I'm going to try again today. And again, this is for the purpose of finding things that I can resell, so I'm always looking at items that were successful in resell before and I'm not too happy about the prices. Now, a lot of you have sent me letters and cards for the holiday season and you're telling me that you really, really enjoy my little thrifting trip. So I figured I would include one in the Vlogmas for 2019. I'm just looking for stuff I can resell and of course, if I find any Corningware or Hager Madonna's I will help myself to them. So you see there's a lot of stuff in this store I thought those little angels were pretty cute, but I didn't like the price seven dollars each I don't even think they are vintage. They look it, but mm -mm. so there's a lot of glassware um, Not full sets What you'll see is a lot of China sets that store has so many plates and cups and saucers I it's a paradise for me, but the prices, not too crazy about them. And most of the sets were not complete anyway. Um, this one was actually pretty, I like that. Um, there's a lot of vintage stuff. This tray here, I think is a nut tray, is very pretty. However, it had a lot of damage on it, like some of the gold was gone, so mm, I passed on that. Sometimes folks ask me what helps me make a decision on an item. I usually go on Etsy and I go on eBay and I see what the sales are and whether or not um, this is an item that I can resell. This Rosenthal gravy boat was very, very pretty, but that's all they had. They didn't have any other item to go with it, so I passed on that. And look at the price here, $98 for this Limoges set. And it was only for eight plus sitting. They didn't even have any serving dishes except one platter. This is very much like um, the Habitat for Humanity store, the Restore. They have a lot of furniture. Again, I thought they were overpriced. They had some nice solid furniture in there in very good condition. Mel glass wasn't really, really good there. Espresso set here was very pretty. They had some... Um, blue willow and you'll see at the end this is a, a nippon uh, set and then this pottery set here was beautiful but check the price that's just crazy so in the upstairs they have wedding gown very 80s Sometimes it's worth it to buy those just for the fabric. You know, if you wanted to like pick up the trim for something else for another project. Or if you were making a dress and you need a skirt for it that already has the form. So I thought the uh, market mission prices were a little bit high for somebody who's trying to resell and uh, I got to replenish the Etsy shop. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff uh, flew off the shop for the holidays and um, 
I don't have um, a lot of new items right now so I need to put up more stuff and uh, to be honest this guy's the end pan out now the wedding dresses that was interesting if you're looking for fabric and uh, trims and um, um, you know all sorts of beads and whatever stresses rhinestones that's worthy to buy one because then what you can do is just like uh, take them out and uh, place them on your um, new project anyway I gotta find a goodwill there's gotta be a goodwill somewhere in the area so here we go this is goodwill in Rockaway New Jersey I have never been to this goodwill I have to switch them up once in a while because otherwise you keep on saying the same stuff over and over again on the shelf this one was really jam-packed so again I'm looking for items to resell unless I find stuff that is fitting in my decor or something that I'm collecting I usually look for vintage stuff anything that's um, decorative item I like to sell pottery and crystal and china and little decorative item but this one had a lot of things that were fairly recent and I'm talking 10-15 years except for this guy here this is a rosewood pyrex bowl it's not super super old it was in great condition they wanted about ten dollars for it which is an okay price I've seen entire sets going for $115-$120 this was great except that it had some chips that was a made in Japan ceramic rooster coffee set and it came with these and one mug only so I passed on that and plus it had chips anyway see the mug right there um, then I saw this little Madonna planter here which I believe was a lefton probably from the 70s but somebody signed it with um, Sharpie in the back so mm -mm, didn't want to be bothered with that this is the pattern from Corningware that I collect this is the spice of life luckily I have this particular casserole with the dome lid they wanted a good price on it it was under ten dollars however these petite here I do not have so guess what I'm taking them and $5.99 for the set that is a bargain I believe that they're missing the lids that's okay I can order the lids in replacement this is a little sugar set in a milk glass it was very dirty inexpensive but I didn't think it would sell this one here I picked actually this is a Andrea by Sadek um, cash pool and it's uh, made in Portugal and hand painted so you're gonna see that in my Etsy shop pretty soon this is an Indiana glass milled glass rooster on its nest in very good condition it looks like there's a chip but it's not it's just a defect in the molding itself it was really really nice so um i picked it up and those are fire king um bowls i believe they're missing the lids as well and it's missing a third one they were in very very good condition but i like to get full sets yes do you see them these are spice of life placemats I have never seen those they wanted $3.99 for all 10 um, it was not a hard decision so to make. before I start cooking and baking cookies I want to show you what I got uh, I'm going to start with stuff I got for me um, I found the petites um, corningware in the pattern that I collect so there's one set here the shallow one and the other ones and again that's uh, the Corningware Spice of Life and 12 yes 12 they were $3.99 for all 12 of the placemat and it says a little Marin on it and I'm very happy about that and guess what I'm gonna wash them and we're gonna be using them I, actually you know what well it says Le Chalotte and uh, what is that that's Le Romarin Le Chalotte Le Romarin et Le Chalotte, this says it twice. Um, they're not necessarily um, pretty to look at, but I gotta tell you that the plastified ones are so much easier to clean. Um, the only thing is that they're a little bit bent, so I have to heat them up a little bit in hot water and then put weight on them to get them reset. But 12 for $3.99. I checked on Etsy, one is nine bucks, nine, ten dollars for collectors, so. I think I did pretty good and this was I can't read it I don't have my glasses I think it's 
Now for the Etsy shop, I found this. I don't know what it is, but it's very intriguing. I gotta put glasses on, hold on. So this is obviously vintage. It's a wooden tray with a, that's also a glass frame. And it has a pheasant that is, let me see if I can give you a better shot. It's entirely made in applique velvet, uh, crushed velvet. And I thought that was really intriguing. I don't know who makes it. Um, it's got the old screw type here. So I don't know if it was handmade or if they were sold like this, but I thought that was really, really neat. Obviously, it needs to get clean. Then I found this one, this uh, maxi um, tray. This is mid-century at its finest. It's a, um, it's in bad shape, but I can clean it up and people understand vintage things. Um, you know, sometimes they get a little rusted. It's got some stain on it, but I think it's very, very pretty. So that's a beautiful tall type tray in metal. Okay. This you saw in the store already. Um, this is a made in Portugal cash po, um, and it's made for Andrea by Sedek. And those sell actually. It's hand painted. Really, really pretty. It's got one little tiny chip. It's so small right here. I don't even think you can see it. Um, I don't think that's. Oh, no, it's right here. It's one little tiny chip here. I don't think people will mind. Uh, so that's definitely going up for sale. And then this one here um, is an urn type vase, pottery. And this is a Hager from 1998, I think. Right, 1998. So. That's definitely going to go up as well. Then the Indiana glass rooster, you saw it. Um, this is milk glass and it's to be clean. It's in perfect condition, no chip, nothing. And it was a little pricey, but that's all right. Um, I can still sell it for a good price on it. It's beautiful. I love those. I just, you know, I mean, a lot of people collect them if you have a farm a house look. It's for you, and then if you have a primitive look, you want this. This is a McCoy cookie jar, and I believe this one is called the Frontier. So it's got pioneers in front of a fireplace, and then on the other side, it has the covered wagon, and it's in perfect shape. To be honest, I don't think they ever put cookies in it. <laughs> but anyway, so it's a McCoy, and I really like it. And that was uh, pretty inexpensive too, and they sell for quite a lot. So. That's that, and then the last piece is milk glass. I don't know if it's uh, it needs to be clean big time. I don't know. I don't think it's a Westmoreland. I don't know. I, yeah, it is a Westmoreland. It's Westmoreland panel grape, and that's a swung stretch vase. And this one is in really really good shape. Fenton, Indiana Glass, um, Westmoreland, they really have, maybe it's Fenton, I can't see, I think it's Westmoreland, they have really high quality milk glass if you collect it, so that's a beautiful one. So, let me put all this stuff away, Scott and I are going to have some lunch, and then what I'll do after that is put all my ingredients together and I'm going to make uh, chestnut shortbread cookies, which is basically shortbread cookies, except that I roasted chestnuts yesterday night um, for dessert. And they were quite good, but I don't know. I don't know where they get these chestnuts. They really don't taste as good as they should. Uh, I have them left over here. I think I have about maybe 20 chestnuts left out of all the ones. So we already roasted those yesterday. I'm going to chop them up and add them to the flour when I make uh, shortbread cookies and then I have some coloring and some nice little pretty sugar beads and I will uh, decorate some of the shortbread cookies. So I'll probably have to make two batches. So anyway, um, let me put all this stuff away and I'll be right back for some baking. 
So I had lunch and it's uh, four o'clock in the afternoon now and I need to get moving with the rest of my day. So I am going to make shortbread cookies. They are just like the Scottish Walkers cookies. They are absolutely delicious. I think they're some of my favorite. They're great with tea. And I'm going to do a twist to them today. I'm going to add a chestnut, which I discussed earlier. So first, let me give you all the ingredients for uh, a regular shortbread recipe. And then whatever else I add to it, you can just leave it or take it whichever way you want to uh, put it. So, uh, start with three and a half cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of sugar, this is three-fourths of a pound, which is basically a full stick of butter plus um, three-fourths of another stick. <laughs> I'm not good at math. All right, you get it, right? Um, leave it at room temperature for a while. Unsalted butter. You need a quarter of a teaspoon right here of salt. And you're going to need the same amount, quarter of a teaspoon. A little bit more if you want more vanilla. Uh, vanilla extract, you can do almond, you can do all sorts of uh, uh, flavors. So that's the basic ingredient. But I'm also adding chestnuts. And here are my chestnuts from last night. So I don't have a lot of them, right? Uh, and what I need to do now is just peel them and chop them really finely. So let's do that. Um, you're probably wondering, well, but Sophia, if I want to make this recipe, how do I make the chestnuts? Okay. So let me get the camera closer and then I'll tell you why we're doing that. These were not the greatest chestnuts. They really don't even smell like good chestnuts. I grew up with that stuff. Every year we had chestnuts for Christmas. So this year I was lucky I found them. Last year there was none. You could only find them in jars. Yeah, they're okay. So how do you make chestnuts? It's pretty easy. You buy the chestnuts, right? You put your oven on at about 350 degrees or 375 if you want to go faster. And then you're going to take the flat part. So there's a rounded part, right? And then there's a flat part of the chestnut. And then you make an X, right? You put them in a pan that can do double boilers. So you have, uh, let's say you have a large cookie sheet and a shorter or smaller cookie sheet. And you put those in the smaller cookie sheet with the X looking upward, all right? And then you put water in the large one. So you're kind of like steaming them. And then you cover the whole thing with aluminum foil and you put them in the oven until they're done, which basically is 25, 35 minutes. And what's gonna happen is that they are going to steam basically while cooking and they will be easier to peel and once you peel them, I have zero nails right now. I've been doing so much cleaning, they're all gone. That's my own fault, I should wear gloves, which I don't. All right, so when you peel them, this should come off kind of like soft, like this, right? Okay, I'm gonna eat that one. Um, so what I'm doing now is that I'm peeling them, but you gotta remove that fuzzy skin because that's a little bit bitter. That might be a little bit more difficult to remove. If you can't remove it, don't worry about it. Just do the best you can. So I'm going to do that with all of my chestnuts. And I'm going to chop them. And they will be incorporated to the flour. So what I'm going to do is remove about a half a cup of the flour here and I'm going to replace it with the chestnuts. And the reason why I'm doing this is because otherwise the proportions for my recipes are going to be wrong. 
All right, so we'll do the chestnuts instead of the flowers. All right, let's get started. So in a bowl, I'm going to combine my butter. Don't mind the dog in the background, it's constantly drinking. I'm just cutting my butter. I don't want to work uh, with the mixer. You could do it in the mixer if you want, if you have one of those KitchenAid mixer. I, if I had one, I know I would never use it. So I know a lot of people rely on them. I don't. I do everything by hand. Are you done drinking over there? Hey, the chef. Come on now. Okay. Okay. So that's the butter, and to that, just adding the sugar. Take a wooden spoon. I put a rag underneath it so that. My bowl stays stable and we're just going to go ahead and cream this. So once you have the right texture, meaning that you no longer feel the grains of sugar in there and it makes this nice kind of like white texture I'm just gonna go ahead and add my flour little by little now this is going to make um, and my salt I'm going to make a very thick cookie dough get green on my finger for me uh, a colorant. Okay, I added a little bit of water because the whole thing was a tiny bit too dry. So it's holding it together. And that's what happens when you're adding green in your eyes. Let me pull this out of the way. Bring this back over. This green colorant is all over the place. I'm going to put a little bit of flour here. And what I'm going to do is roll this and make a cylinder, preferably, that holds its shape. why you wrap it and put it in the fridge is that you pretty much want it to harden a little bit so it's easier to cut into cookie shapes afterwards. I'm still compressing it a little bit. All right, in the fridge, it goes. So Houston, we have a problem. I realized as I was cleaning up, I still have the green, by the way, on my fingers, um, that it's not vanilla extract that I put in there, it's uh, anise extract, <laughs> that's okay. Okay, so it's been in the fridge for a little bit over an um, half an hour, actually. So what I'm doing now is basically Okay, that's the shape of my cookie. I'm um, no the sheaf. I am slicing off 
and here's one cookie and they're going to go straight in the oven and they are cooked basically once the edges get a little bit golden um, these do not expand there we go so you can make them thicker but then they won't cook okay so they have they kind of have to be the same uh, thickness so you need to be a little bit consistent here take your time and sometimes they'll break so you'll just go like this yeah they do smell like anise <laughs> that's what happens when you work without glasses so I have my first batch here and they're going in at 350 degrees I'll check on them every so often again the edges get golden and that's when you know they're ready you put them to the side to cool off and then we can decorate so here's batch number one and I'm gonna put them right here on my cookie rack and some of them are a little bit more golden than others but that's okay I'm just happy they stayed all in one piece they need to cool down before I can put the icing on it and not all of them are gonna have icing I gotta be honest I'm doing the icing mostly for the kids I'm one of those weird people who does not like icing or frosting So let's make a little bit of coloring here. I need my confectioner's sugar. I'm not going to do a lot of icing. I said that before. Just enough for three colors. Put a little bit of water in there. A gel color. There should be plenty. Nice. And the third one we're gonna do green. So you can try your cookie with or without the um, stuff. Well, I like frosting. All right, well. By the way, yeah. I'm playing the role of William since YouTube doesn't like kids anymore. Yeah, right. There's a shortbread with chestnut. Mmm, mom. <laughs> How is it? Yeah, it's good. Um. A little crisp. Well, the shortbreads. No, I mean, usually shortbread is crisp, but it's softer. Oh, know? yeah? So yeah. I left them too long? Maybe. Oh. But, uh, you know, it's still good. Yeah? Yeah. Can you try it without the, so the uh, frosting? Oh. Come on. Well, let me finish it. All right. See, that's a little better. Mm hmm. As far as the texture goes. Well, that one was probably thicker, that's why. No. Yeah. So, how but did it I taste? Mean, it, it you know what? A... Let me try it. Yeah, try it. Why don't you try it? I'm trying one of the. Uh... Hmm. Mm. 
You didn't taste the chestnut in this. You put chestnut in it? Mm -hmm. <gasps> oh, I forgot you were allergic. Sorry. No, I'm not allergic. These are great to dunk in now. Gee. It tastes pretty good. I like them. No. Hi, I made shortbread cookies. Um, all right, that's it for me today. Have you ever made shortbread cookies before? No, that was my first time. Huh, how about that? I like them. Mmm, I can't wait to dip that in my coffee. Chocolate is good on shortbread. Yeah, you can put chocolate on there and dip them in chocolate. I'm sure they taste better without the frosting. Right. Okay. Guys, that's it for me. I will see you tomorrow. I think I'm taking you to New York City tonight. Um, and then you'll see that video tomorrow. Otherwise, um, I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. But Sunday, I'm definitely taking you to that Victorian house. So give me a thumbs up if you liked it. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.